Hello and official welcome to the first video in my wedding series. Eee! My name is Megan. I got engaged on October 27th and I can't wait to share with you guys my wedding vision and everything like that. And I am just so excited to be starting this series and starting the next chapter in my life. So I hope you guys enjoy. Alright, so let's get started. Let's do a little backtracking here. So I got engaged on October 27th, like I mentioned in the intro, and I knew it was going to happen. Um, I had been planning this wedding. I already knew the guest list and a lot of these things. Actually, before we got engaged, I just have known that he was the one for me. His name is Weston Hansen, and he's amazing. I love him so much. And I just knew he was the guy that I was going to marry. So I've been planning, like, we went to a couple weddings over the last year or so. And from those events, I was just writing down names and getting them into the app I'll share with you guys in just a minute. So I knew it was going to happen. I wanted it to be a planned engagement. Well, I didn't want it to be, but... Um, that's how it ended up turning out because I wanted to give him a ring as well So we ended up planning that on our fifth anniversary of being together We would get engaged. We went to the same spot that we had gone every single year that was our tradition and That's where each of us popped the question. So he went first because he thought um, it was really important for him to have that, still have that tradition of being able to propose and pick out the spot and have it be a little bit of a surprise. But then I had my ring and I did it as well. But honestly, the whole time we were just laughing. Um, <laughs> number one, because we were so awkward. And number two, because we were just so happy and it was just a fun moment to be together and have this experience and all of that so I'll insert a couple of pictures for you guys to see uh, what it looked like when this was happening but I was really really happy so take a look then we are to the present time we've actually looked at a few different venues but I want to include that in its own video just because I have video from each of the venues and I want to put that all together and show you guys and kind of talk about the different pros and cons of each place and just kind of the budget and th different things like that so today we're gonna be talking about just the wedding vision and kind of the logistics of some of the things just to give you guys some background as we kind of get into this wedding series so the number one thing is I use an app called the knot um, you might be familiar with it that's just kind of the home page and um, it is a great app I found it I don't even know like months ago a long long time ago I found this app and I really love it. It's been such a great thing to have while I'm planning for finding vendors and venues and just all different things. So I've really loved it. One of the biggest things that I've used it for is the guest list 
Now, obviously, I can't really like show you the whole, my whole guest list, but currently we have 104 people or four guests that are coming or that we are planning to invite, I guess I should say. not. I don't know that all of them are coming. I actually know that some may not be coming. Um, pretty much all of my family lives in California and will be flying in for the wedding. So I know for some of them it's going to be very difficult, but I guess it is what it is. So anyways, <laughs> um, that part's kind of kind of stinks, but a small portion actually of this guest list is my family members, and then a small portion is my friends, which are pretty much just going to be my in my bridal party anyways. So it's a, I have a small part. Um, Weston's family is quite large, and a good healthy portion of the guest list is his family. We plan to get married in a year and a half. Um, a little bit more than that actually and the reason for that is mostly financial um, it just doesn't make sense right now financially to say yep in May or June or July we want to get married it just doesn't make sense financially for us I mean if you watch any of my teacher videos um, I'll have to talk about how much I make as a tutor because I don't make very much and while Weston does make a healthy chunk of change um, he's still going to school so that takes a lot of his money too so it's just it just doesn't financially make sense for us right now but if we have time to save up for some of these things then yeah in a year and a half it will be much better so I know you might be calculating in your head what month that is it's actually over a year and a half but it's just easier to say that so the other things are I want this to be very elegant. I want it to feel like um, an important event and I just want people to have a really good time but I want it to be like a formal event. I know some people they say like okay come in jeans like we want it to be super casual like I am not like that. I want everybody to be dressed up. I want them to be looking good and to put on their best for this event because I mean if you're coming all this way like I want you to be looking good feeling good and have the whole event just be awesome this is my wedding vision board you can see that my pictures are just very white and beautiful there is a lot of elegance to it also some of that light pink and some of that gray and I just really want it to be beautiful and by have some kind of water nearby and just be very pretty. So you can see down there, those are my wedding colors. I just kind of talked about those. Some pinks, blues, grays, and a lot of white. And then my style is romantic with a bit of formal and a touch of elegance. And then the setting is like a garden, a hotel, or tree. So one of the must-haves that I really, really want that we had at a relative's wedding is these grilled cheese hors d'oeuvres. So, so it's just a little square of grilled cheese and you put it on the shot glass of tomato soup and it is delicious. I loved it. And I just want some good Minnesota food as well. Like I really want walleye to be on the menu. I love walleye. Um, I've had some really really good walleye and I think that just like in a way represents Minnesota and just different things like that you know being able to be on a farm and like with all the trees and I just really want something that's going to represent Minnesota especially for those relatives who are coming in from somewhere else oh the budget so that's one of the most important things I think when it comes to a wedding that a lot of people I feel like don't really talk about and that's what makes it really tough to know how much is normal so when I looked it up on Google because <laughs> you know we Google everything they said it was about $25,764 now you'll see a very big difference in some of the venues when I talk about those 
and it's kind of difficult because as you're looking at all the different things like photographer, videographer, photo booth, the food, the reception venue, and just all the prices and they add up, it gets expensive very quickly. And I think that's one of the hardest things in talking about financially, especially with relatives, like parents and stuff. Um, it's very difficult and it's hard to imagine that in some way I'm going to be paying like $9,000 plus for this event. It just blows my mind and I'm like, how am I going to afford that? It's just crazy. So knowing that stuff and here's the thing. Yes, I could save way more money. I could have a wedding that's $1,000, but I want to be able to have a moment that I'm going to remember forever and I just want it to be really magical and special and if that costs a little bit extra then I think it's worth it to put in that extra cost <clears throat> geez, to make it a really amazing event. So um, obviously we're going to try to save wherever we can but at the same time we're not going to cut corners on some things just because we want to save a quick buck like I think my most important thing is the reception venue I think that's what you're gonna remember for years to come the food and eh, I mean I don't really remember my food that often I know guests really care about food but to me that's not the super important thing so I don't know um, but to me, I think if you have a really nice reception venue, everything else is going to fall into place and it's going to be really easy to get nice pictures, nice video, um, to have a good experience and all of that stuff. So that's kind of what I'm mainly focused on. Obviously, being so far out from the date, like the venue is really the biggest part right now. But as we do get closer, those other things will start to kind of fall into place and be important as well. So yeah, um, I have some ideas for other things, but it's just too far out right now to really make any other ideas concrete or solidified. So that's where I'm going to stop for today because I want to get into the venues because it's so important and it's one of the things that they're like as soon as you get engaged find your venue so <sighs> all right now that I talked your ear off and the time is getting up there I'm gonna let you guys go and I hope you join me for the next one because I can't wait to show you all the amazing beautiful venues that we've gotten to see and just kind of talking about budget and um, pros and cons of each place. I also didn't really show you my ring, but there it is. I know, so sparkly and beautiful. So yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed and I'm so excited that you're joining me on this journey. Thank you so, so, so much. And I'll catch you guys in the next one about venues. Yay!